Benvenuto, welcome to Cherry Hill Home Cooking. My name is Mark. Today we're gonna to make a bolognese sauce or a bolognese ragu. But more specifically, we're gonna make my great aunt Barbara's bolognese sauce. <clears throat> now, full disclosure, I don't claim that this is a 100% authentic bolognese sauce that they would make in the wonderful city of Bologna, I believe it is. Um, I've kind of researched this over the years. Um, I've seen all different kinds of recipes. Some say do this, some say do that, some say don't do this. Anyway, this is my Aunt Barbara's recipe, my great Aunt Barbara's recipe. But again, now my great aunt was married to my grandmother's brother, my uncle Frank, who was my grandparents and of course her, my grandmother on my Italian side and of course the rest of her uh, siblings were all Italian. They were from, uh, as I've told you many times, uh, they were uh, from Calabria, so that's the southern part of Italy, Italy, and I believe Bolognese, or Bologna, is in the northern part of Italy, and my great aunt Barbara was Polish, <laughs> so I don't claim this is 100% authentic, but it's pretty close. Anyway, um, now, a couple of things to remember with a Bolognese sauce is, Bolognese is not a tomato sauce. It's a meat sauce. So don't confuse this with Sunday gravy or a tomato-based uh, sauce. This should be a thick, rich meat sauce. The tomatoes are just the accompanying player. Um, okay, so let's quickly go over the ingredients. Uh, this is not a huge list of ingredients, nor is it a complicated thing to make, but it does take several hours. Um, okay, so first thing we're going to need is uh, one pound, or at least for this recipe, of course, if you want to uh, make a bigger recipe, then double, quadruple, whatever the case may be. The measurements in the same amounts. So we've got a pound of uh, ground beef. You want lean ground beef. Um, we've got a half a pound of um, ground pork. Again, lean ground pork if you can get it. Um, and we also have um, two um, sausages. Now, that is one thing that I don't think is really authentic to, oh, by the way, we want to uh, take the uh, casing off the sausage. Um, so I think this is one of the things that is probably not um, completely authentic about this particular recipe because um, I don't think typically, let me just throw that away, rinse my hands, I don't think typically, or in Bologna at least I should say, in the 1980s when this uh, kind of became the craze of the world. Um, I don't think they would use that. <clears throat> Some people use um, 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 Italian bacon. I can't think of the word of it off the top of my head right now. Um, oh, that's awful. Not cup of cool. Um, oh, I can't think of the name of it. Anyway, it's a, a you know, a cured Italian uh, uh, bacon uh, beef. What the heck is the name of it? It slips my memory. Anyway, but I don't even think that was really traditional. There's this, actually, this great um, uh, website uh, or, or uh, other video that I've seen, and it's a, uh, uh, you know, authentic Bolognese um, um, backed by the Chamber of Commerce of Bologna. Um, anyway, so, well, however you say it. Uh, but I don't think, uh, <laughs> the point is, guys, I don't think sausages 100% authentic. What is authentic is salt and pepper and some nutmeg. Um, believe it or not, nutmeg's used in, used in a lot of Italian cooking. Really, other than that, that's all the spices in here. There's no garlic, there's no oregano, there's no basil. That's not, those things are not used in every single Italian recipe. Every single American Italian recipe. Uh, but not necessarily if you went to Italy. Um, you're going to need, of course, some good extra virgin olive oil. We need some red wine. All right, again, this doesn't have to be the most expensive wine on the shelf. Just get something that uh, you'd enjoy uh, having a sip of if you were having dinner or cooking. Um, oh, also, actually, um, let's come back. Wait, let's come back to this um, just for one quick moment. If you don't uh, want to use pork or you don't uh, eat pork, pro pork products, you can substitute that for um, uh, beef, add more beef. So do one and a half pounds of beef instead of 
one and a half. And then also the sausage. Um, the sausage does kind of add that little bit of Italian uh, taste to it. Um, so if you are going to use it, um, then I would you know use um, chicken Italian sausage. All right, so you don't have to use the pork product. Um, uh, so we said some good virgin, uh, extra virgin olive oil. We need some nice drinking wine. We're going to need some milk. Um, we're going to need uh, two cups of uh, crushed uh, tomatoes. Um, of course, we've all talked about what my favorite brand of uh, ground pale tomatoes is, guys. You can also use um, puree if you want, tomato puree if you want. Uh, you could use a, a whole, you know, whole tomatoes in the jar, but you want to break them up a little bit. Um, we're going to need a little bit of butter for the end, which is going to add that just extra yumminess. Um, okay, and then also one of the really important things to a bolognese is um, our starter for it. Okay, so we need, um, say, two uh, regular-sized carrots, two medium-sized carrots. Uh, I don't know if carrots really come in medium, large, and small. But anyway, you want two carrots. You're going to need two, carrot, uh, two uh, st uh, stalks of celery and a... Uh, um, you know, medium to large um, yellow white onion. All right, I've chopped up most of these. The thing is, guys, what you want to keep in mind is you want to chop these pretty small, okay? So I'm going to do, or pretty, um, you know, dice them pretty fine. Uh, I've done them all, and Wade likes you, me to show you all what <laughs> I've done to cut them. Pretty easy, all right? So you want to, um, you know, take your stock, maybe uh, cut it into thirds or fourths, Lengthwise, and then cut up with the with the carrot. I'll take it, cut it in fourths, and then just dice it. Um, I peeled the carrot. If you want to wash it, um, it's probably not 100% necessary to peel it. This carrot's going to cook for quite a while in the sauce, uh, our liquid, so it's going to get nice and soft no matter what. Uh, then my onion for this particular small dice. Um, not as important to get the onion as small of a dice as the rest of the veggies because the onion's gonna really kind of just melt into the sauce anyway, but I'm gonna get them cut up as fine as you can without cutting off your fingers. All right, so that's basically it. Um, okay, the only other thing I want to talk a little bit about is the pasta. Now, because this is a bolognese sauce recipe. I'm not going to concentrate on the pasta a little bit or that much long, but I do want to talk about it a little bit. Uh, my aunt uh, Barbara always uh, made it with um, pappadelli. I believe that's the, the name, how it's pronounced. Um, now, typically with a bolognese sauce, uh, if you're going to serve it with pasta, you want it with a nice wide uh, noodle. I don't know if you can catch it on there. Probably not, but also this type of noodle's got a little bit of a not a ridge, but it's the way it's cut and gone through the the spaghetti mold. Is it's it's got a little tiny bit of texture to it, and what that's going to do is because with the bolognese sauce, we're not looking at a thin or even a thick tomato sauce. We're looking at it as a meat sauce, and that's going to cling to the um, to your pasta noodles, so that with each bite you get um you know you're going to get the the really tender, flavorful meat and the pasta. Um, I wouldn't use spaghetti for this or a thin spaghetti because um, you're, you could, it's still going to be delicious, but you're going to be um, eating your uh, bolognese separate because it's not going to cling to the pasta. Um, if uh, you can't find uh, pappadelli um, or um, you just don't want to use it, I'd go with a uh, rigatoni um, or a penne. Those would work perfect with that because the meat's going to, as you stir it together, the uh, the sauce is going to go inside uh, the noodle, and you'll get that wonderful bite. Okay, guys, I'm going to put this stuff away, and we will get cooking. See you in a bit.
Okay, like all great Italian dishes, it starts out with a warm pan and some extra virgin olive oil. Um, you, you want enough to really kind of coat the bottom of your pan. It's probably going to be two to four tablespoons, depending upon the size of pan you're using. All right. And we're going to get let, let that warm up a little bit. Oh, before I forget, while we're going over the ingredients, um, I mentioned the wine. Um, and also, if you don't want to use wine, replace the wine with um, vegetable stock, beef stock, whatever you prefer. Um, and I'm going to turn that up. To, oops, I'm turning it down the wrong way. I'm going to turn that up to medium. And so we've got our um, onions, celery, and carrots. Get them in our pot. And um, we want to start to get these relatively, um, you know, we want the um, onions to get translucent. So I don't know, everybody says, well, what is translucent? Well, you know, so opaque. You can kind of see through them, but you really can't see through them. But also, we want to start this to, um, we don't want it really to caramelize, but we do want to start to get those natural um, sugars from the carrot and the celery and the onion working together. We don't necessarily have to get it browned. Um, and that's going to take a good five minutes, guys. Even, maybe even a little bit longer. So, Wade will show you what it looks like when we've got it in the pan now for just a few minutes. And when it starts to do its thing, we'll come back. Okay, we've been cooking for just about uh, five, six minutes now. I don't know if you can really, you know, on the camera, notice that, uh, you know, our veggies have started to soften up a little bit. Our onions have become translucent. All right, so now I'm on uh, medium right now, okay? So it's, it's hard to tell you exactly how to, you know, how long to do it, what it's going to look like, because of course, uh, they're naturally grown vegetables. They might have a little bit more water content in them and then the ones I used the last time or they might be a little drier. Anyway, um, it's really going to take you a good five, six, seven minutes. Don't wash it, okay? Um, so, um, you can know, I know, again, you notice we've just got a little tiny, tiny bit of browning on the bottom of the pan. That might be a good indicator too of, uh, for you where you want to go with them. All right, we don't want to caramelize them, but a little brown never hurt. All right, so... Next thing we're going to do is going to throw our meats in. All right, now, so the idea with this, where this, there, this is a meat sauce, we want to break this up nice and fine. We don't want big chunks. Um, and of course, that's going to happen over the time that we're cooking it. But you want this to be relatively, you know, minced really well. So you don't want you don't want to end up in any, with any big chunks. When we're done, you'll see all the meat be nicely combined, and that's going to take a good ten minutes. So there you are, guys. That's at uh, the very beginning of getting our meat done. We'll pop back in at about halfway through, and then I'll show you what it looks like when I feel it's uh, at the point it should be. All right, we are just at about the five minute mark. And as you can see, I've brought out the big wooden uh, spatula. And um, you, you don't have to, you know, uh, stand here and do this the whole time uh, during its uh, frying process and stuff. Um, but, you know, every, stand close to your pot. One, you want to make sure no, your meat doesn't burn. And give it a, a little toss and a chop every um, couple minutes or so. All right, so like I said, we're just a little over five, at this point, a little over five minutes. Bring it back in a little closer, I wanna show them. So you'll, you'll see we've got um, a lot of moisture that's you know come from the, uh, the meat and the veggies. Um, so as we continue to let this uh, saute, um, that's gonna start to evaporate. Now that might take another five minutes, it might take another eight, nine, 10 minutes. Uh, but that's our end goal, is we wanna have all of that moisture evaporated. All right, we'll be back. Okay, for the last five minutes, what I've been doing while you were all gone is I really have been, you know, kind of sitting over the pot. Again, we're at medium heat 
and just kind of breaking it up uh, so that we get a nice uh, fine mince. Uh, this is going to continue, or the meat will continue to break down and the vegetables even as we go on because this is a pretty long cooking process. All right, so what I wanted you to see is where we are. All right, see? Almost no more moisture is left in the bottom of our pan. All right, that's just about uh, perfect. Um, so, and it has taken just about seven minutes for us to get to this particular stage. All right, so well, as I said, you can see our meat is all nice and chunked. All right, so now comes the fun part, the wine. All right, so you want enough wine, which it's probably gonna be about two cups. Now you could do this in stages if you want. Um, I just kind of uh, put it all at once, but you want enough wine to just about cover, maybe not, maybe cover is too literal of a word, just to kind of bring it right to the edge of your meat. So that's going to be about two cups. All right, so you can see we're just, you know, the meat's all underneath it. We can see it. All right, now this is going to take an additional five, six, seven minutes because we basically want to evaporate all the alcohol and reduce the wine down to almost nothing. Um, so you can see this is where it is now. It kind of looks like, um, like a stew. All right. And when you come back, that's going to be almost all gone. See you in a bit. Oh, and don't forget, you don't have to stand there and necessarily watch it. Come back in, hun, and show them that it's just bubbling um, a bit. It's not boiling. You're on a high uh, simmer. Um, you don't have to stand here and watch it, but stay close because, again, you don't want it to evaporate too quickly, and then you'll be burned. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, about uh, two-thirds of our uh, liquid, which is really our wine, has uh, uh, evaporated. You can see we have just a little bit of uh, moisture left. Remember when we started this, the wine was more or less covering uh, the top. Um, you might ask. You put all that wine in there to evaporate it. Well, yes, as we've said before, we want to evaporate the alcohol and we want to evaporate the liquids. So all that delicious uh, from the grape and the making of the wine processes now made our, our meat so soft. Um, and as you can tell, it's even a lot more minced uh, than when uh, we added it. Um, every few minutes I've come over, kind of stirred it um, and broken up the meat again. All right, so now it's time to add our tomatoes. All right, so again, we got our two cups of crushed tomatoes or tomato puree, kind of whatever you have or whatever you prefer. All right, we're also going to now at this point put our salt, pepper, and nutmeg in. And we're going to give this a stir. Now the fun part was putting in the wine. Of course, it's all fun cooking in general, but now the hard part is we are still four hours away from this being done. So at this point, you want to mix all of your, uh, you know, mix your tomatoes in with all of your ingredients. Now, I haven't forgot the milk. The milk is going to go in at the, the last hour. So we're going to simmer this for three hours, really a minimum of three hours even longer if you want. You might need a little bit longer because maybe your um, uh, sauce hasn't got to the consistency you want it. But um, so typically, so it depends upon what uh, heating device you're using. <coughs> Excuse me. For uh, this burner, for me, a uh, kind of rolling simmer is about medium low. All right, so if you can just kind of about see that, your, it's not boiling, um, but yet it's not uh, still either. Now, we've got to cover this. You want to cover this tightly. All right. All right, now, the reason we want to cover this right now is we don't want all of our liquid to evaporate. We want that. Uh, meat to stew in there so it gets really nice and tender um, 
So, if, of course, if we didn't uh, put a cover on the uh, pot, everything would evaporate. So for three hours, come back, check it every 10, 15 minutes, make sure you've got a little bit of water uh, or enough moisture in there. You might even have to add a little bit more water or stock. Um, and you're going to determine that by as you really want this to go three hours. All right, so if you need to add, you know, a quarter of a cup, add a quarter of a cup. Um, go back and check it in another 10 minutes. It should have just a little bit of, you know, it should be simmering. All right, see you in three hours. Or we'll, we'll check in with you when we check it once or twice over the next three hours. Okay, our sauce has been simmering for just about an hour. So there you go, guys. See, we're just, we're not at a rolling boil, um, but it's not still either. So that looks about perfect. Um, I don't think at this point we need to add any additional liquid. Um, I was going to say liquor in it, liquid, um, but I, I probably what I was going to say liquor is, is I had some leftover um, Prosecco, which I'm going to use in case uh, I do need to do need to add some more. Uh, of course, you can do some water or some stock. But anyway, that looks pretty good where it is right now. We're going to cover it back up and let it continue to do its thing. Okay, guys, we're just about halfway through on our cooking time, so I'm just going to give it another check. It's probably about maybe a half hour, 35 minutes since we've last come back. No, it looks looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to add just a tad bit of a uh, little bit more liquid to it just because I'm going to take a quick run to the store. So if Wade peeks at it, it'll be fine. But I don't think it really, really needs it. But that's going to evaporate anyway. But all right. So there we go. We're well on our way. See you when we're... Yeah, probably the next time we'll see you, it'll be done or close to being done. Nope. Won't be done because we're still going to add our milk in, and then we're going to go an hour with the cover off. So see you in about an hour and a half. Okay, it's been just about three hours. And of course, you know, during this last three hours, as you have we shown you guys, we've been checking it every now and again, making sure it doesn't totally dry out. And there you go. So that's just about uh, where I want it. Um, you remember, I think on our second check on it, we added a little bit of um, liquid to it. Um, now we're going to actually let this reduce down uh, even further. But I'm going to give it a quick taste first. I think it has enough salt, but I do think it needs a little bit of pepper. Okay, so we're going to now leave it uncovered, and we want it to still stay at a high simmer. All right, and we'll let that reduce down a little bit more before I add our milk to it. So we'll be back in a little bit. All right, this has been reducing for about another 15, 20 minutes. It's just about where I want it. You can see that, uh, of course, when it's standing still, it looks uh, like there's a lot more liquid than there is. But uh, all right, so at this point, um, I'm going to turn it down slightly. And we're going to add our milk. And stir it around, get it all nice and incorporated. And we're going to add our couple tablespoons of butter. And we want to bring this back up to a high simmer. And believe it or not, we're, we're getting there. This four hour sauce is almost done. Shouldn't take that long to move it back up to a simmer. Let's, let's just keep the camera on it. Watch it. Mm. 
All right, there we go. So we're going to kind of stick close to the pot. You don't have to stir it consistent, consistently, but now we've put our milk in there and everything. This could burn quickly. So keep your eye on it. Give it a stir every several minutes. And it should reduce to where we want it to in probably anywhere between 20, 25 minutes. And now's a good time to start my pasta. See you guys in a little while. Okay, our bolognese is finally done. Um, I guess the consistency is really a matter of uh, preference. Um, I like it just about at this stage. You can see it's it's not loose. It's not really thick. Um, the, the meat will stand up in a little clump by itself for a while. I'd, um, I don't know, I'd kind of compare it a little bit to like chili, as thick as chili, um, but definitely thicker than a, than a tomato sauce. Um, anyway, all right, guys. Bolognese sauce. Bolognese ragu is done. In a little bit, we'll come back. I'll show you how to plate it up, and we're going to have supper. Okay, I've uh, made my pasta. Um, as I said, this uh, episode is more about the bolognese sauce, so we didn't go uh, deep into the pasta, but so this is how the way uh, my Aunt Barbara would uh, prepare it. And she'd usually do this at the table. She'd take a spoonful of her sauce, put it down there, and she'd put her noodles in there. Coated with the sauce. And she put some noodles on a plate. I can't do that beautiful chef swirl everybody seems to be able to do, so this is going to have to do. Then she would. Put a good amount to cover it with a good amount of the sauce. She'd always put this in a separate bowl after she was done, if anybody wanted any more. And there you go, my Aunt Barbara's pasta bolognese. Okay, finally, after four, five, probably close to five and a half hours, we're ready to eat. Salute, hon, thank you Ooh. for your <laughs> mouth. Mm. Mm. Okay, now, of course, any good Italian sauce needs a little bit of Parmigiano Reggiano. Mm. <laughs> or a lot. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Of course, a nice little salad or some. Um, Garlic bread would also go really nice with that. We are trying to keep our calories down a little bit, so this is, it doesn't look like it, but this is our big meal for the day. Yeah. Um, and salad and salad dressing and bread would just add extra calories. And personally, I would rather have all my calories in pasta. So, all right, dig in. Okay, remember, this is not a tomato sauce. That's why it's mm. not all saucy and runny. It's a meat sauce. Mm. Wow. That's mm. tasteful. Tasty. Mmm. Mm. It's delicious. Delicious. It always amazes me that mm. there's such a small amount of um, nutmeg in there. But you can still taste that. Just that little mm. tiny bit of... Nutmeg, and a lot of people are surprised that nutmeg is found in a lot of Italian cooking. Mmm, very good. 
change the flavors of the meat. Mm. 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 One of my favorites. Well, I hope that you took the time to um, visit with my Grand Aunt Barbara and make this recipe with us um, and that you enjoy it. That's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to eat. Mm. Please check us out on CherryHillHomeCooking.com. Please like and subscribe. Ciao. Bye. Manja. <laughs> Mm. Mm. Taste that uh, wine in there. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm, definitely. <laughs> that was like... Mm. I, I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it.